Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Kay Francis and Warren William in My Bill. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we follow the fortunes of a gallant woman, a symbol of all those gallant women who faced the world alone and found happiness for themselves and for their children. I think perhaps we've all known someone like Mary Colebrook in the play My Bill. Hers is the brand of courage and devotion for which mothers are famous. Her story is a tribute to the love and sacrifice of all mothers the world over. But Mary Colebrook is a typically American mother, and tonight you'll hear her played by a typically American star, Kay Francis. It's the part she played in the Warner Brothers picture, a performance that had all the warmth and understanding of Mary Colebrook herself. So I'm not surprised that you've been asking to hear Kay play the same part at this microphone. And co-starring with Kay, we present Warren William, who's back on this stage after too long an absence. You know, we get a good many definite instructions from you every week. Not uh, ju just as we do the comments and criticisms. And one of the most frequent comments from members of this audience is that after listening to the Lux Radio Theater for a few Monday nights, they feel they'd like to take out a regular membership. So they buy a cake of Lux toilet soap for the first time. And that's a noble gesture. And the beginning of a pretty good habit, too. One cake always deserves another, and another, another, and another, another. So the regular listener becomes a regular customer. And that's what makes Lux toilet soap a national habit among millions of American women. And tonight we have a play especially tailored for these millions of women. A play about one woman who found herself fighting the whole world with only one real ally, a ten-year-old son named Bill. The strongest bond in the world is the tie between a mother and child. Incidentally, this is one of the best parts we've ever had for a boy actor. And I believe you'll hear more about the lad who's playing it tonight, Dix Davis. Now the curtain rises on the first act of the play, My Bill, starring Kay Francis as Mary Colebrook and Warren William as John Rudlin, with Dix Davis as Bill. In the quiet little town of Colebrook, Massachusetts, is a quiet street called Colebrook Avenue. There, in an old frame house, simple and dignified, live the Colebrooks, for whose ancestors the town was named. There are five in the family. Mary Colebrook, a young widow, Reginald, age 18, Muriel, 16, Gwen, 12, and Bill, 10. Muriel, 16, is on the telephone, engaged in a long-winded conversation. Well, I don't know, Lynn. I'll... Gwen, will you soft pedal that? Hello, Lynn. Um, I'll have to talk to Mother. What? Mother, postman. I'll get it, Gwen. You keep on practicing. Wait a minute, Lynn. Here she is now. Mother, Lynn wants to know if I can go to his sister's party tomorrow night. Why, of course, dear. But I can't go if I don't get that new dress. Miss Colebrook, the butcher's in the kitchen. He says he wants to see you. All right, Beulah. As soon as I get the mail. Mother, wait. What about my dress? Hello, Lynn. Oh, wait a minute. She's gone again. Mother, will you please listen? Of course, dear. What is it? Well, Lynn wants to know it. Mail, Mother. Oh, nothing much, Gwen. Just bills, I guess. Any news from Aunt Carolyn? Well, I don't see anything. Well, when is she coming? Well, I don't know. She simply wrote that she'd visit us. If people want to be that vague, we just have to take them as we find them. But we must be nice to them. Mother, her. please! What about my dress? Don't shout like that, Muriel. Now. What's the matter, dear? Oh, Mother, you know perfectly well, Madam Claire said I couldn't get the dress until we paid for the last one. Now, do I get it or not? Have you got the money? Darling, you're too young to start worrying about money. And don't scowl like that. It spoils your looks. The butcher's in a hurry, Miss Colebrook. Oh, dear, the butcher. All right, Beulah, coming. Hello, Lynn. Oh, I don't think I can go. No, nothing you've done. I'm just not sure I can go, that's all. I'll call you later. 
Hello, sis. Who are you talking to? Lynn. It's about the party. And I won't go unless I get my new dress. Well, you won't get it, so don't worry. Why won't you, Reggie? Well, what do you mean? Come on in the living room and I'll tell you. What's the matter, Reggie? Listen, have you two noticed there's been a distinct shortage of money in this house for the past few weeks? Well, I just found out that our credit in this town has been marked NG. Hmm, what does that mean? No good. Reggie! Yep. I, uh, I went into Kaufman's department store to get a new tie, and they refused to charge it. A measly dollar and a half, and they refused. Reggie, how humiliating. And then I went across the street to Miller's and got the same answer. Why, our charge account has been discontinued everywhere. Oh, it's all Mother's fault. She has no sense about business. You leave Mother alone. You're always picking on her. What is it now? Bill Colebrook, just look at you. Next to losing our credit, you're the biggest disgrace in this family. I'll keep quiet. What's the trouble, children? Mother, just look at Bill. I see him. He's a little dirty, isn't he? <laughs> Hello, Bill. How are you, sweetheart? If Aunt Carolyn comes, you'd better hide him. Hide, Bill? Why, nonsense. Well, Aunt Carolyn isn't going to like having a hoodlum around the house. You know how she is. Yes, Reggie. I know how she is far better than you. You hardly remember. I do very well. Anyway, she's got lots of money, and I hope she comes. Yes, dear, of course. Have a good game, Bill? Yeah, I made a 90-yard run for a touchdown. He looks as if he'd crawled it. Oh, forget Bill. Mother... Mother, if we're on the brink of financial ruin, don't you think you might tell us about it? Oh, Reggie, what's the matter? Our credit is so poor that I can't buy a dollar and a half tie. That's what's the matter. And you've got a desk full of bills. And you didn't pay the butcher because you haven't any money in your purse. I look. Well, how am I ever going to finish my law course? And how am I going to get my dress? Or go on with my art study? What about my piano lessons? Children, please. Now, don't get yourselves all upset. It's bad for your digestion. Eula, door, please. Mother, is all the money Dad left us gone? We want to know. You know, we're not babies any longer. Of course you're not. Reggie, straighten your tie. Well, there's been a little mix-up in my accounts with the brokers, that's all. But there's nothing for you to worry about. Tomorrow, Mother will take care of everything. Miss Colebrook, you've got to come out and talk to these men. What's the matter, Bueller? And Dave's going to move our piano. That's what we're going to do, lady. Unless you got 24 bucks, too much payment. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, at the moment I haven't. But I could call the company and explain. Won't do no good, lady. Cash or the piano. Let's get it, Jake. You leave my piano alone. Gwen, please. Don't they you dare touch that piano. You're the next thing you know that won't have the chance. I'll find him in prepared. Mother, you've you got to leave. We can't have to live like this anymore. Hiya, Colebrook. Lynn. Oh, hello, Lynn. How are you? The door was open, so I came on in. I dropped over to see why Muriel won't go to the party. You moving? Watch it, Jake. Oh, no. And no, we're just getting rid of the old piano. Oh, what's the use of kidding Lynn, Mother? The fact is, the piano was being taken away from us. Why don't you shut up? Because I'm tired of more than poor, poor flushing. That's why I've had enough. Go on, you big bag of wind. Oh, Bill, don't. Well, I'm sorry you had to come right now, Lynn. Just everyday problems of a family. Sure, I know. Of course. But I'm afraid it's a little upsetting for Muriel. It's horrible. Don't feel like that, Muriel. I know how these things are. And everything's quite all right anyhow. Don't try to lie, Mother. You're just an ostrich. That's what you are. Am I, darling? You're just... Burying your head in the sand to hide from reality. Muriel, you shouldn't talk to your mother like that. Oh, don't you tell me what to do. What, what do you know about it? Does your family pay its bills? Your mother knows what's happened to the money your father's left her. Well, Lynn's father is very much alive, dear. Oh, you, you know what I'm talking about. Muriel, take it easy. Look, Mrs. Colebrook, I have a little money, and if you'd let me help... Mother, her... if you take so much as one penny from Lynn, I'll never speak to you again as long as I live. Never, never, never! What a gal. Gosh... I never knew she got like that. Oh, oh, she doesn't usually. Well, but things have been a bit upset lately. She'll be all right tomorrow. <laughs> I certainly hope so. Look, if there's anything I can do, well, I'm I... afraid I'm the one who'll have to do things. Goodbye, Lynn. Goodbye, Mrs. Colebrook. So long, Bill. So long, Romeo. Better luck next time. You'll never see him again. Gwen, go wash your face. You're a sight. I don't care. When I think of all that practicing I've done just being wasted... Oh, I don't care about anything. Are things really bad, sweetheart? Well, they aren't too good, Bill. Well, I got some money. Can you do anything with 65 cents? <laughs> mm-hmm. You can get a quart of ice cream. The children always feel better when there's ice cream for dessert. Yeah, but what about everything else? Mm, tomorrow, Bill. I'll think of something the very first thing in the morning. Okay. But don't let them get you down, sweetheart. I'll go get the ice cream. Thanks, darling. Hello? Cambridge National Bank. May I speak to Mr. John Rudland, please? Sit down, Mary. 
Well, it took you an awfully long time before you decided to come to see me. Yes, John. And I know I shouldn't have. I hope you'll never say that and really mean it. What can I do for you? Well, well, uh, I need money. And I've nothing to offer as security. Yes, I know. Well, how could you? <laughs> it's my business. Bankers are supposed to know about those things. Why didn't you come before? Oh, pride, I suppose. A woman hates to admit that she's a bad businessman. Is that the only reason? Well, no. You see, every time I decide to come, I'd remember how jealous Robert used to be of you. That was a long time ago, Mary. Yes. Yes, Robert's been dead almost nine years. It's hard to believe sometimes. It doesn't seem that long. It seems longer to me. John, please. Mary, you're a strange person. You've been hiding away up there in that house all this time. Never going anywhere, never seeing anyone. What are you getting out of life? I have four children. They've been my life, John. And they've kept me pretty busy. I imagine so. Well, how much money do you need? Hello? Anybody home? We're all home in the living room. Oh, that's nice. What's all the packages, Mother? Just a few things for dinner and a few other things. Reggie, you wanted a tie, didn't you? Well, here it is. I hope you like the color. Uh, a tie? Uh, Bill, put these flowers in water, will you, sweet? Sure. Flowers? Mother, uh, what's the meaning of this? And Gwen, dear, the piano will be back this afternoon. The man said at three. <gasps> oh, Mother! Muriel, here's your dress, darling. Madame Claire just finished it. Mother, you got it! Oh, and Reggie, I want you to pay the rent, the lights, the grocer, and the butcher. You'll have to hurry before they close. Well, what am I going to use for money? Oh, don't be such a pessimist. Here. Mother! What a roll of bills. Well, where did you get it? Don't ask so many questions. Do what she tells you. Is everything all right, Mother? You got the check from the broker? Everything's perfectly grand. Oh, darling, you're wonderful. Sure she is. Three cheers for Mother. What about it, Gwen? It's okay with me. What about you, Reggie? Well, I, I think it's great, Mother. Rah, 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 rah. <laughs> mother, <laughs> mother, mother, mother. <laughs> oh, don't be silly. I'm glad you're so happy, kids. But please remember one thing. Anyone can be normal... In normal times. That's no test. It's when things go against us that we show our true colors. We must never weaken. And no matter what happens to us, ever, the main thing is that we must stick together. Oh, well, don't worry, right. Mother. Right. Now hurry, Reggie, okay. and pay the bills. Muriel, call in and tell him you can go to the party. Gwen, you'd better move the furniture back again and make room for the piano. And Bill, what are you doing this afternoon? I've got a football game. Oh, yes. The Tigers versus the Panthers. <laughs> All right, kids, run along now. And Bill... Hold that line. All right, signal 62, 78, 23, hike. Kick it, Bill, kick it. Oh, boy, what a kick. Nice work, Bill. Hey, holy mackerel. You busted a window. Come on, come oh, on, gee, it would have to be Mrs. Crosby's window. Yeah, that old crab. Well, it's goodbye to your ball, Bill. Well, I'll get her back. I ain't afraid of her. Come on, I got fellas. Ball, young man, when my window is fixed. And not a minute before. Now go away. All right, Mrs. Crosby. I guess you're just what everybody says you are. What do they say I am? A mean, nasty old woman who locks herself in. Why, you get out. Get out of here. I... Hey, what's the matter? My, my heart. Gee whiz. Here, sit down. You want me to call a doctor? No. No doctors. Got any medicine in the house? Upstairs. But I, I'm all right now. Don't bother. Here, let me rub your hands. I'll stimulate the blood. What happened? Just one of my spells. Gee, ain't there anyone to take care of you when you get one? No. I live alone here. In this big house? I should think you'd get awful lonesome and want someone to talk to now and then. I haven't anyone. Gee, I'm sorry. I guess what my mother said must be right. What did she say? Well, just last week she said, Mrs. Crosby isn't really mean. It's just that she hasn't got a single friend anywhere. And that's why she feels the whole world's against her. She said that? I, uh, I wonder if she wouldn't pay me a visit sometime so we could get acquainted. Oh, well, I'll ask her about it. You'll like my mother. She's swell. I'm sure of it. I guess I'll be getting on home, well, if you're all right now. Oh, uh, just a second. 
Oh, what did you say your name is? Bill. Well, Bill, before you go, you better get your football. Gee, thanks, Mrs. Crosby. <laughs> Reggie. Now, Gwen, eat all of those vegetables. They're good for you. Oh, gee. Excuse me, will you, Mother? Muriel, sit down. Where are you going? Mother, I'm late. Lynn will be here soon, and I've got to do my nails yet and get dressed. You sit right down and finish your dinner. Lynn will just have to wait. Oh, Mother. Oh, you look lovely tonight, darling. Your eyes shine like electric light bulbs. Oh, yes, uh, Reggie, did you pay the light bill? Yes, yes, I, I went right to the main office. Uh, Mother, I've been trying to find out where you got all that money. You didn't... Hiya, kids. Hiya, sweetheart. Oh, Bill, you're late for dinner again. Everything's stone cold. Oh, that's all right, sweetheart. Think nothing of it. Where were you, anyway? I was having a little talk with Mrs. Crosby. Mrs. Crosby? That old crank? You don't know anything about her, so keep quiet. Sit down and eat, Bill. Mother, I still want to know where you got them. Oh, Gwen, I've been meaning to ask you. Did you notice if they brought back the same piano? It's the same one. But how do you know, dear? I wouldn't want to get an older one or anything. The middle C is flat. Mm, yeah, that, that, that's ours, all right. Mother, will you listen? Have some peas, Bill. Thanks. Mother, please. You've been stalling all through dinner, but I think it's time you answered my question. Why, what question was that, dear? Oh, you know what I mean. Where did you get all that money yesterday? Yes, yeah, you never did tell us, Mother. And as long as she got it, that's the important thing. Mother, I insist upon knowing. Of course, Reggie. I got it at the bank. How? How does anyone get money from a bank? Thank you, Bill. That's right. I just asked them for money, and they gave me a note. You see, Reggie, you were worried for no reason at all. Oh, now who can that be? I bet it's Lynn. Maybe it's Aunt Carolyn. I'll answer it. Good evening. Don't you ever answer the doorbell? Yes, when it rings. Sometimes it doesn't. It's um, erratic. Like your mother. Well, are you going to let me in? I'm your Aunt Carolyn. Oh, Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, please come in. Mother, Aunt Carolyn is here. You're Muriel, of course. I'd have known you from your earliest pictures. Hmm, you're quite pretty. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is Gwen, and this is Reginald, and Bill. Hello, Aunt Carolyn. How do you do? Hello. Cold brooks. Hmm, I can see the qualities of the cold brooks in you. Eternal qualities they are, make no mistake. How are you, Aunt Carolyn? We're delighted to see you. We looked forward to your visit. Thank you. You must be tired after your journey. May I get you some dinner? No, thanks. I've had my dinner. Well, uh, well, perhaps you'd like to freshen up a bit. I'll take you to your room. Thank you, but I've taken a house down the street. Oh. Oh, I see. Well, uh, well, I'm sure we're all disappointed. Oh, let's stop pretending. Where do you go from here? What do you mean? I mean now that you've hit the bottom. But how do you... Oh, I found out all about your problems, even if you didn't send me a signal of distress. Mother, what is she talking about? Is there anything wrong, Mother? So you've kept them in the dark. Lie to them. Your own children. Well, I'll tell them. Your mother has squandered every cent your father left you. You mean... You, you mean we're broke? We have nothing? Nothing. You're penniless. Mother! Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, children. But it's true. I've done the best I could, The but... best you could... Everyone in this town says you're scatterbrained, and they're right. You're a stupid, impractical woman. You can't talk like that to my mother. It's time somebody told the truth. Have you thought what'll happen when we're thrown into the street, Mother? We don't own this house, you know. Have I thought about it? Reggie, I haven't slept for weeks. But how could you go through that much money? You don't understand, dear. I didn't know anything about business when your father died. I, I never had to. Well, I, I... I made some investments. Why? Why? to get all the things I wanted for you children. Interest rates were going down, and I had to find some way to triple the principal. So I took a chance. You had no right to do it. It was criminal of you. Muriel, you've never used that tone to me before. I wish I had. Now we're paupers and the laughingstock of this town. That's all your fault. Oh, Father always said you had no sense of responsibility. But Reggie, two and a half percent... I don't I... want to hear anything about it. A woman like you has, has no right to have children. Will you please leave the room? All of you. I want to speak to you about Carolyn. I'll leave the room. I'll, I'll kill myself. That's what I'll do. Oh, shut up, Gwen. Why have you come here, Carolyn? To take care of my brother's children. Before he died, he told me everything that was in his mind about you and begged me to watch over them. And how do you propose to take care of them? I want you to give them up. Well, I won't do it. Never. Then I'll take them from you. Well, you try it, Carolyn, and I'll... What? There's nothing you can do. And when the last dollar is gone, they'll come to me of their own accord. 
because I can give them the things they need. Would you please go now, Carolyn? I think you've said just about enough. I've said everything I want to say at the moment. Good night. Where do I put these packages, sweetheart? On the table. Hello, Muriel. Hello. Well, I'm beginning to economize. Bill and I walked all the way to the market. How much did we save on the vegetables, Bill? Well, you said a dime. That's right. Mother, I want to know something. Again, dear? You told us you got that money from the bank. Yes, dear. What bank? The Cambridge National Bank. Why? From Mr. Rudland? Well, yes, darling. He's the president, isn't he? If we're so poor, what kind of security could you have given him? He didn't ask for any. I just gave him a note, payable on demand. Oh, Mother, how could you? That... that bachelor! Well, I... I don't understand you. You've given a note payable on demand to John T. Rudland, who's the most despicable man in this town. Now, darling, you're going through the hysterical period of your life, but you can't afford to be too ridiculous. A lot of people don't like John Rudland because he's a banker. He's smart, but he happens to be a very fine man and an old friend. He's no good, and he's always been in love with you, hasn't he? Muriel, where did you... He was after you even when my father was alive. Aunt Carolyn said so. Oh, Aunt Carolyn. When did you see Aunt Carolyn? I didn't. But Reggie did, this morning. Oh, I see. Well, she stops at nothing, does she? Oh, I wouldn't worry about John Rudlin or that note, dear. I'll pay him back. You'll do nothing of the sort. You're not going to disgrace this family anymore. When the time comes, I'll pay what you owe. You'll pay? Yes. I'll, I'll marry some rich man and, and save this family. <laughs> I've just sent Lynn away. Boy, are you nuts. Oh, no, Bill. She's, she's just melodramatic. She has a self-sacrificing complex. But I think that shows something good in her. Are you ready, Muriel? Come on, I've got the bags. Reggie, Gwen, well, where are you going? Well, there's no use making a fuss, Mother. The girls and I are leaving. Leaving? Yes, I've had a talk with Aunt Carolyn, and she's invited us to live with her. Reggie, well, you, you, you can't do this. You're traitors, that's what you are. Now, we're simply trying to be practical, Mother. You don't seem to realize what our position is. I realize better than you know. Oh, but we're not licked yet. I'll find some way out of this difficulty. Already, I, I, I've begun to economize. I may even find a job for myself. But no matter what happens, you can't leave. Well, if you intend economizing, why should you object to our going to live with Aunt Carolyn? Who can well afford it? And it would make things easier for you. It's simple arithmetic. It isn't arithmetic at all. It's a spite. Oh, she doesn't care about you, Reggie, or any of the others. She just hates me. She never wanted your father to marry me. I, I don't know why. Well, that's something we know nothing of. We're merely trying to be sensible. Now, children, you're young and you don't realize what you're doing. Well, I don't mean just running over to Aunt Carolyn's. It isn't how much you'll hurt me. But it's how much you're hurting yourselves. It, it makes you cowardly. I can stop you, you know. You're not of age. But I won't. I'm going to let you make your own decisions. But you ought to know that this is all wrong. Why, we, we agreed to stick together. It's too late for speeches, Mother. We're leaving. Come on, Gwen. Muriel. Goodbye, Mother. Go on, scram. You're a fine bunch of heels. That's all I can say. It really, really gone. And I couldn't stop. Don't cry, sweetheart. They're not worth crying about, honest. Why, I could have managed somehow. It would have come out all right if... If we just stuck together. Sure it would. But if they've turned out to be rats, you can't help it. Oh, that's children. But, Bill, you don't understand that they're still my children. And I want them back. Sure, I know how you feel. But never mind, sweetheart. I'm here. Yes, Bill. Yes, you're here. You're still with me, aren't you? just a moment, Mr. DeMille presents our stars, Kay Francis and Warren William, in the second act of My Bill. Does that sound familiar? A crowded bus is stopping to take on a passenger. It's Mrs. Randall, all tired out from a hard day shopping. Goodness, I wish these buses wouldn't start till a person's had a chance to get her fare out. Oh, wait, driver, I'm caught in the door. There, that finishes the feather on my hat. 
Took the top right off, I'll bet. <sighs> Phew. It's good to get a seat, even if you are practically shoved into it. I'm so tired, I almost wish the Johnsons weren't coming over tonight. Glad I've got this new dress, though. Hope Jim will like it. I wish I was home. I can't wait to get into a good, warm, Lux soap bath. It'll make a new woman of me. Mrs. Randall has the right idea. After that Lux toilet soap beauty bath, she will feel like a new woman, rested and wonderfully refreshed. And here's the important thing. She'll be confident of the charm she knows is most important of all, the charm of perfect, exquisite daintiness. You see, Lux soap has active lather that carries away perspiration and every trace of dust and dirt. It leaves skin really fresh, sweet, and its delicate perfume is so refreshing. And ten to one, when Mrs. Randall slips on that new dress of hers this evening, she'll say to herself, I feel so fresh after that lovely Lux soap bath. It's really wonderful. Yes, fastidious women love the way a Lux toilet soap beauty bath makes daintiness sure. Why don't you use white, fragrant Lux toilet soap for a daily beauty bath? It's such a luxurious soap, and it costs so little. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Act two of My Bill. Starring Kay Francis as Mary Colebrook and Warren William as John Rudland, with Dix Davis as Bill. It's a lonely place now, the little house on Colebrook Avenue. With three of her children gone, Mary faces life sadly, but without bitterness. Young Bill is concerned chiefly with the financial problems involved. With this in mind, he's gone to visit his young friend, his new friend, Mrs. Crosby. Well, Bill, I'm glad you came over. Well, I just wanted to see how you were, Mrs. Crosby. Besides, I need some advice. I'm flattered you want to take me into your confidence. Well, even if you haven't got a lot of kids, you kind of understand. Mm-hmm. Now, what is it that's troubling you? Mrs. Crosby... Have you got any idea where I could borrow some money? If it's that window you're worrying about, forget it. Well, that's one thing. But I've got to get some money for other reasons. And I've got an idea. I see. You want to negotiate a loan. Huh? Uh, negotiate. Uh, that means uh, talk it over. Uh, put it through. Oh, yeah. But not from you, Mrs. Crosby. I wouldn't use our friendship for that. No, ma'am, this is strictly business. Well, then... I suggest you go down to the Cambridge National Bank and see John Rudlin. I heard things about him, Mrs. Crosby. You sure he's all right? Of course he is. He's a fine man. But, but, but don't tell him I said so. But you just talk with him. I, I'm sure you can work out something. Take a seat, Bill. What can I do for you? Well, Mr. Rudlin, I want to... Negotiate a loan. Huh? Oh, I see. What for, Bill? Well, Mr. Rudman, I want to go into the newspaper business, and I'm desperate for three dollars. <laughs> what do I have to do to get it? I mean, I haven't got any securities and that kind of stuff. No security, eh? Hmm, that's bad, isn't it? Well, yes, sir. But I have a pretty good reputation. That counts, too, doesn't it? Yes, yes. We always consider the borrower's reputation, Bill. And I've never heard any slander about you. But uh, do you think that business conditions are ripe to open a newspaper stand? Well, they're ripe for me, anyway. All right, Bill. I think we can manage to let you have that loan. Oh, boy. Oh, uh, Miss Kelly. Yes, sir? Will you draw up a loan for $3 for Mr. William Colebrook? What? Why, yes, sir. Right away. And, uh, Miss Kelly, tell the office boy he doesn't need to go out to buy papers. Hereafter, we'll take from Mr. Colebrook. Yes. Oh, boy, Thanks. Don't you think the idea's got possibilities, Mr. Rudland? Sounds good, Bill. And why don't you get a regular route besides? People to subscribe through you. Say, that's great. No wonder Mom says you're smart. How is your mother, Bill? Well, there's nothing wrong with Mom that money can't cure. 
That's why I'm starting now. Good boy. Take care of her, Bill. She's a fine woman. You want me to start serving dinner, Miss Colebrook? I suppose you might as well, Beulah. I guess they aren't coming. Yes, sir. Oh, I was so sure they'd be back for dinner, Bill. I, I couldn't believe they meant it. Well, I can't see why you want to be sad about losing three palookas like them. <laughs> oh, maybe it's not altogether their fault, Bill. Maybe I've trained them badly. I've, I've always allowed them to be completely free about everything. They think I've done wrong. And I suppose they feel justified in leaving, especially with all that Carolyn can offer them. Look, sweetheart, did you ever have a talk with Mr. Rudden before he made those bum investments? No, I didn't. Well, I wish you had. He seems like an awful nice guy to me. What do you know about him? Well, I'll tell you. I figured that since we were broke, I ought to get busy and make some money. So I decided to go into the newspaper business and went down to borrow some money from him. You borrowed money from Mr. Rudlin? Well, I'll pay him back. I only got three dollars. But, Bill, how did you happen to go to him? Well, Mrs. Crosby recommended him. You know, I told you I was over the other day, and we've kind of got to be good friends. <laughs> Bill, you certainly get to the strangest places. Well, Mrs. Crosby's all right. She wants you to come over and visit her sometime. Yes, I will. But not now. I, I've got too much on my mind. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, I don't know which way to turn, Bill. No? Well, I don't want to be telling you what to do, sweetheart. But I think the first thing you ought to do is look for a job. Bill, I think you've got something there. <laughs> know how to operate a contometer? Uh, what's that? Never mind. Do you type? Well, uh, not very fast. And of course you don't know shorthand. Uh, no, no, I don't. I'm sorry, but there's nothing. But I can sell Mr. Barnes. I know it. I don't doubt that, Mrs. Colbrook. But you see, it would be embarrassing for our customers to have to buy merchandise from a former member of their social set. There's nothing I can do. Sorry. All right. Thank you. <laughs> something over to Mrs. Colebrook, but in our business, one has to be able to make friends. Do you think you could do that? Oh, certainly. I don't have any trouble making friends. Well, if you're sure about that, I think we might get along together very well. Don't you think so? Oh. Oh, no, I don't. Good afternoon. We've just been shopping with Aunt Carolyn. Yeah? Paper, paper! Gwen, come along. We haven't got all... What? What's this? What are you doing here? Well, I'm selling papers. You want one? Bill, does, does Mother know about this? Sure she does. A cold brook selling newspapers. What's the matter with that? My mom says it's okay, and if she says it's okay, it's okay. I'll put a stop to this if it's the last thing I ever do. She's disgraced the cold brook name long enough. Come along, children. Just a minute. What did my mother ever do to you, anyway? What are you so mean to her for? That goes for the rest of you, too. Keep your voice down. People are looking at us. Let them look. They ain't seeing much. Children, come along. Hurry, children. Yeah, hurry. You ought to be ashamed. they are nothing but a lot of palookas, all of you. Paper, paper, read all about it. Palookas. Paper! What's the latest news, Bill? Oh, hello, sweetheart. How are you doing? Oh, swell. I made 80 cents so far today. How are you doing? Did you find a job yet? Not yet. Well, don't worry. Something will turn up. Sure it will. Sure. Look at me. A couple of days ago, I was broke. Now I'm in business for myself. <laughs> yes, and you're a great success, too, Bill. Look, sweetheart. You don't mind, do you? I mean, about me selling papers on the street? Mind? Well, I'm proud of you, darling. That's all I wanted to know. Why must I leave this house? Because I've taken a lease on this property and you're a month behind in your rent. You'll vacate this house by the end of the week and as soon as you do, I shall bring the children back to their home. You're doing this deliberately, Carolyn. Oh, why do you hate me so much? What have I ever done to you? I'm trying to protect the Colebrook name. You've gone through a fortune and left your children no alternative but one of charity. And now you allow William to make a spectacle of himself selling papers in the streets. You have no consideration for family pride or your children. You're a disgrace to them. Is that the way they feel about it? They do. And the sooner you and Bill leave town, the better it will be for all concerned. 
I realize you have no funds, but if you do as I ask, I shall see to it that wherever you go, you'll receive enough for living expenses. I don't want your charity. Well, that's up to you. Good day. Is that Aunt Carolyn, sweetheart? What's she want now? Bill, we're leaving here. Huh? What for? Well, Aunt Carolyn has taken a lease on this house and wants us to get out. Well, giving us the needle again, huh? Well, we can find another place. No, Bill. We're leaving Colebrook. What? Just because she wants to get rid of us? Well, it's the children, too. They're ashamed of us. Me being broke and you selling papers. Well, where do you want to go, sweetheart? New York. I've got just enough to get us there and take care of us until I can get a job. Couldn't find anything here? No. Oh, besides, Bill, the whole town knows about my children leaving me, and I I've got to get away. Okay, if that's the way you feel about it. There's a train for New York in a few hours. Will you be ready? All right, I guess I can sell newspapers there, too. I'm sure you can. All right. I'd like to say goodbye to old Mrs. Crosby, can I? Of course, dear. I'll pack your things for you. Mrs. Crosby? Mrs. Crosby? Mrs. Crosby, are you home? Mrs. Crosby! Bill, here. Mrs. Crosby, what's the matter with you? My, my heart. You, you shouldn't be alone like this. I'll get my mom. She'll know what to do. Hurry. There. There you are. You just lie there and rest, Mrs. Crosby. You feeling any better now? Thank you. I knew Bill's mother would be like this. It was nice of you to come. You sure had me scared, Mrs. Crosby. I'll be all right now. Of course you will. The doctor will be here any minute. No doctor can give me a new heart. No, but he can help. You'll see. I don't want to rush you, Miss Colebrook, but if you're going to catch that train, you better get started. Yes, Beulah. Are you going away? Yes, Bill and I are leaving town tonight. I was packing when he called me. Yeah, that's what I came over to tell you, Mrs. Crosby. We've been put out of our house. But I... I thought your aunt rented the house. And that's just it. But how did you know? Oh, I... I... Uh, heard about it. It's getting late, Miss Colebrook. You'd better hurry. All right, Beulah. Uh, wait a minute. What are you and Bill going to do? Look, Mrs. Crosby, you're sick, and it seems to me that Sweetheart and I ought to stay here with you until you feel better. What do you think? I wish you would. Oh, Bill, we can't do that. Why not? Besides, if you leave now, the kids are likely to think you're just running away and don't care about them. <clears throat> and we just can't leave Mrs. Crosby like this. Please stay you would make me very happy. But, Mrs. Crosby... Please. All right. We'll stay. Bill, did you have this all figured out? Is that why you came over here tonight instead of going to your room and packing your things? Honest, sweetheart, there are times when I think you don't understand me. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, Doctor, is she any better? I'm afraid not. She's a sick woman, Mrs. Colebrook. This condition's been coming on for years. Now, well, it's too late. But isn't there anything we can do? Nothing except stay with her. She's very lonesome, and oh, yes. She wants to see John Rudlin. Will you phone him? John Rudlin? She was rather insistent about it. I'll be getting along now. Good day, Mrs. Colebrook. Good day, Doctor. Hello, Dr. Haley. Good afternoon, Bill. Hello, sweetheart. Bill, what are you doing home at this time of day? Well, I closed up for a while. How is she? She's been calling for you all afternoon. You'd better go in and talk to her. Okay. Bill. Bill, wait. She's very sick, Bill. Yeah, I know. But she'll be okay with you taking care of her. Look, darling. Sometimes, no matter how much care you take care of people, it, it doesn't make them better. I don't know what you mean. Sometimes people get tired, Bill. So tired that nothing can help them. They've lived such a long time. And they need rest. And then after a while, they stop trying to go on. It's nothing to be frightened of. Even they aren't frightened. Do you know now what I mean, darling? I, I guess so. She's a good friend of yours, isn't she? Yeah. Go into her now, my sweet. She's waiting. Hi, Duchess. Hello, Bill. How's the paper business? Swell. I made a dollar twenty today. How are you doing? Uh, not so good. Has Mr. Rudlin come yet? No. 
Mom's calling him now. What do you want to see him for? Business. Think you're the only one who... <laughs> oh, gosh, isn't there something I can do for you? Yes. What? You can give a kiss to an old lady. I don't know any old ladies. <laughs> then you can give it to me. Huh. What's you sniveling about? Nothing. I just got a little cold. Anything else you want me to do? Get Rudlin up here. Quick. He'll be here. Don't worry, he'll come. After a short intermission, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Kay Francis and Warren William, will return in Act Three of My Bill. Well, tonight we have our Hollywood fashion reporter, Libby Collins, with us. Say, Libby, that's a very interesting little business you've got on your head. Is interesting the best you can say for it, Mr. Brewer? Well, honest, Libby, it looks good. But say, isn't that, isn't that hat kind of different from what you girls have been wearing? I mean, uh, softer and not so crazy, if you don't mind my saying so. More, uh, more feminine. I'm glad you approve, Mr. Roick. I found out a long ago, if it's men you're trying to please, a little straw hat with violets and roses on the brim will do the trick. Mr. Roick, hats are going to be really adorable this spring. But here's an advanced tip I'd like to give the girls who'll be wearing them. You mean not to be carried away and buy too many, Libby? No woman can have too many hats. <laughs> but seriously, Mr. Roick, it's what's under the hat that I want to talk about. For that fresh as springtime look, now is the time to begin regular, thorough complexion care. Then, when a girl purchases what you call one of these uh, little businesses on the top of her curls, she's much more likely to be glad of what she sees in the mirror. Libby, uh, isn't that where the Lux toilet soap comes in? It certainly is, Mr. Roick. A few minutes, once or twice a day, devoted to Lux Soap Active Lather Care is a grand investment. I'm a busy person, so I don't have much time, but I can take an active lather facial in almost no time at all. It certainly does the trick. Libby, will you tell us how you take your Lux Soap facial? It's very simple. I just pat the nice, rich Lux lather lightly into my skin, rinse with warm water, then cool and pat my face dry. Active lather really removes dust and dirt and stale cosmetics thoroughly. And here's the important thing. I take these Lux soap facials regularly. Never neglect this care at bedtime, no matter how tired I am. You're a wise woman, Libby. And thanks for the tip. To the women in our audience, I say, won't you try these Lux beauty facials for 30 days? Here in Hollywood, famous screen stars take them regularly. They say their skin feels so smooth and soft after a Lux facial. It looks so fresh, too. You'll be delighted with this gentle Lux care, they tell you. So why not get three cakes of Lux toilet soap tomorrow? Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. The curtain rises on the third act of My Bell. <laughs> Mrs. Crosby has passed on. But Mary Colebrook and Bill still live in her house, for this was her last wish. Meanwhile, Aunt Carolyn, established in the old Colebrook home, rules her charges with an iron hand. Louise, what did I tell you about leaving your things in the living room? Oh, I'm sorry, Aunt Carolyn. I was just going out. Where? Well, I had a date with Lynn. I thought you weren't going to see him anymore. Well, I, I thought it all over, and if it's all right with you... It's well... not all right with me. But... We'll discuss it later. Gwen, did you practice today? No, I don't feel much like playing. I didn't ask you that, my dear. Now, if you want to continue with your lessons, you'll have to make them worthwhile. Yes, Aunt Carolyn. Did you uh, see this in the paper? It's about Mrs. Crosby's funeral. Who's Mrs. Crosby? Well, that's the lady Mother's been living with. Oh, I wonder what she'll do now. Well, they'll have to leave the house for one thing, I hope. Then they can leave town. Maybe she'll be able to borrow some more money. From whom? Well, I don't know. I, I asked you from whom, Gwen? From Mr. Rudlin. Has she ever borrowed from him before? Uh, I think so. Then I suppose she'll do it again. What, what do you mean? Stripes on the zebra. You can't change them. Well, I'm going up to bed. It might be a good idea if you all go to bed early for a change. Good night. 
Good night, Aunt Carolyn. I'm getting tired of being bossed by her. So am I. What right has she got to tell me when to practice? What right has she to tell me I can't see Lynn? Yes, and I think she's gone a little too far with Mother, too. Forcing her out of this house. Well, I never expected her to do that. If you ask me, it was pretty low down mean. I saw Bill on the street today. He he said that Mr. Rudland was going to let them stay at Mrs. Crosby's place until the estate was settled. Yes, but what then? Afterwards, I mean. Well, I don't know. Something ought to be done. Something will be done, only I, I don't want John Rudland mixed up in it. Yes, what is it? I'm Reginald Colbrook, Mr. Rudland. This is my sister Muriel. Well? We came here to talk to you about Mother, Mr. Rudland. Have you? Good. I've been hoping you kids would snap out of it and come to your senses. I suppose you want to follow Bill's lead and lend a hand. Looking for jobs, eh? Ever done any secretarial work, Muriel? Me? Uh, well, no. The fact the is... The fact is, Mr. Rudland, we didn't come here to answer questions, but to ask them. Oh. Well, I think you have a few to answer. Why aren't you living with your mother? Aunt Carolyn said she'd care for the rest of us, but she wouldn't support Bill and Mother. And you let your mother go. Well, there was nothing we could do. Oh, yes, there was. You could have thrown the house in Aunt Carolyn's smug face and walked out and got yourselves jobs. But I'm going to law school, and Muriel is... What of it? Ever hear of night school? Ever hear of boys working their fingers to the bone for their mothers? A mother like yours, one of the finest women who ever bore three ungrateful brats and a thoroughbred. Get out of my office, both of you. Now, see here, Mr. Rudlin, I came here to... I don't give a hoot why you came. Get out. Don't go, Reggie. Do you think your bellowing is going to cover the issue, Mr. Rudlin? You can't whitewash yourself by scolding us. What are you talking about? She's talking about lending Mother money without collateral. Yes. Why did you do it? Is that any of your business? I'll lend her as much as she'll ask for. You're very generous, aren't you? Oh, you can't fool us, Mr. Rudlin. We know your reputation in this town, and when Mother can't pay... Why, you... you... Now, you listen to me. I don't care what you two unnatural children think of me or what you say, but when you become disrespectful of your mother, you become far lower than anything you might accuse me of being. I lent your mother that money because she's trying to do the bravest, the finest work that's given a woman to do, and I did it without thought or hope of repayment. There's a lot more I could tell you about your mother, but it would be a waste of time. All I know is that when I look at you two, I'm glad I'm not a father. Now get out! Sit down, Bill. Well, I can't stay, Mr. Rudden. I'm going to sell 50 papers today. I think what I have to say is just a little more important. But i got to get, get enough to buy a Mother's Day present for sweetheart. <laughs> She'll get it. Look, Bill, I'm executor of Mrs. Crosby's estate. Yeah? What's that got to do with me? A great deal. You see, you're the sole heir to her property. Huh? She left you everything she had. There's considerable stock. I won't know how much until it's liquidated. Then there are two houses. Two? Yes. The one you and your mother are living in, and the one your Aunt Carolyn rented. You mean our house? That's right. Mrs. Crosby owned it, but it wasn't generally known. Now there's a clause in Aunt Carolyn's lease obliging your aunt to vacate immediately should the property change hands. Say that again. <laughs> I said you had the right to take possession at any time. Yeah? Hey, look, could you do me a favor? Of course. What? Go down and take care of my paper stand for a while. Huh? I got some important business to attend to. <laughs> Took you long enough to answer that bell. I beg your pardon? Who are you? I'm the butler. Oh, yeah? Where are the others? Where's Aunt Carolyn? Uh, she's not at home. Well, that's swell. You can start packing because you're not at home either. What's that? That's right. You and Aunt Carol and anybody else that's around. This is my house, and I'm coming in. So get out of my way. Who is it, Jenner? It's me. What? Bill. Bill, for Pete's sake. Bill, where did you come from? What are you doing here, Bill? I'm taking over, that's what. This house belongs to me. What? Hmm? You heard me. Mrs. Crosby owned this house, and she left it to me in her will. Are you joking? Do I look like I'm joking? She left me this house and hers and a lot of other stuff besides. And Mother's moving in right now. Oh, Bill, that's wonderful. Gee, that's great. Congratulations. Okay, okay, but you're still moving out. Now go on, scram. Oh, now wait a minute, Bill. There, there's something we want to tell you. Yes, wait, Bill, you... Wait, nothing. You can't come crawling back just because the ship isn't sinking anymore. Now go on, beat it, scram. <laughs> How 
soon will things be ready, Beulah? Oh, in just a few minutes. Everything's cooking, and I just finished fixing these flowers in the hall. Ain't they pretty, Mr. Bill? Mr. Bill, where do you get that stuff? I wonder who that is. If it's your Aunt Caroline, Bill, I hope you're gonna let me be the one to throw her out. Nothing doing. I'm saving that pleasure for myself. Hello, Bill. Sweetheart. Hey, how'd you know I was here? I told her everything, Bill, I had to. You're not of age, you know. Oh, that's right. Well, you're a little early, but come on in. Where are the children? Children? Well... Oh, Bill, you didn't send them away. But isn't that what you wanted me to do? Of course not. Oh, look, Bill, this letter came this morning. Read it. Dear Mother, we've been fools. And no matter how poor you are, we want to be with you. Please answer. Your loving children, Reginald, Muriel, Gwen. Don't you see, Bill? They wanted to come back. And you really want them? Oh, of course I do. Okay, I just wanted to be sure they weren't lying to me about this letter. All right, Beulah, open up. Oh, there they are, sweetheart. Mother. Oh, it's good to be back with you. I missed you so much. Oh, you to have you all together again. Uh, that dinner table in there looks like a party, Bill. Well, you bet it's a party. We've got something to celebrate. You all can sit down now, because I'm going to start serving. Just what is this? Oh, boys, Aunt Carolyn, now the fun begins. What's going on in here? What is it? Nothing unusual is going on, Aunt Carolyn. Mr. William Colebrook is giving a party in his own home in honor of his mother. Bill's the name, Ma. <laughs> Have you lost your wits? My son has inherited this house. And a lot more. Tell her. I'll tell her. He has more money right now than all the Colebrooks ever stole from the Indians. This house and Mrs. Crosby's house and securities. I'll find out about this. You won't have to go far, Miss Colebrook. I'm the executor of Mrs. Crosby's estate. And Mr. Colebrook here is now owner and completely with his, in his rights. Who are you? Mrs. John Rudlin. Rudlin? Have you the audacity to bring him in this house? I have. Then you're more shameless than I thought. Robert's been dead for almost nine years, Carolyn. It's disgraceful. Goodness knows what went on when my brother was alive. Miss Colebrook, I think you ought to leave. Yeah, so do I. When I do go, these children will go with me. If their mother has no sense of decency, I have. Carolyn, you're being ridiculous. Well, I'm sorry, Aunt Carolyn, but we'd rather be with Mother. We've changed our mind. And don't you dare say anything about Mother. Thank you, children. But your Aunt Carolyn has made some insinuations which ought to be cleared up. She has a narrow, warped mind, and I'm afraid she'd rather see evil than good in anything. Oh, I... I've tried never to speak badly of your father. But your Aunt Carolyn forces me to tell you the truth. And a girl, you tell him, sweetheart. I married your father because... Well, because I, I've been brought up to believe that wealth and family were the most important things in life. But I learned that human kindness and sympathy were much more important. Your father didn't just seem to feel that way. Oh, not that he was ever deliberately vicious or cruel. He was only indifferent to people's feelings. I believe his family would call it being strong-minded. My brother Robert was... Keep quiet, Carolyn. I'm talking now. I suppose when the Colbrooks first settled here, they... Well, they had to be hard and disciplined in order to survive. And that was the way he wanted to raise his children. I believed that that kind of training was no longer necessary. But I told him so. Oh, we, we, we fought about it constantly. In time, we would have worked out our own problems. But his family wouldn't let us. They interfered at every turn. They hated me. They've always hated me. If you think I'm going to stand you here... You keep quiet. And a girl, sweetheart, go ahead. Just let me get my breath. You always told us father was a swell guy. Well, I always wanted you to think so, Reggie. But it's too late now. I, uh, I had known John Rudlin when I was a girl. He was a bank clerk then, and... Well, I... I made the mistake of marrying your father instead of him. But when he learned what I had to put up with, he came and begged to help me. Your father found out about it. Your Aunt Carol and the rest of the cold book saw to that. They began to poison his mind against me. They accused me of, of every dreadful thing you could think of, even in public, till I thought I couldn't stand it any longer. But I knew they'd never let me have my children, so I put up with it. Until your father died and I was free of them. Mother, why didn't you tell us before? Because I've tried to spare you these things. Well, even after your father's death, I, I refused to see John Rutherden because of any possibility of hurting you children. Not even for financial advice, and heaven knows I needed it. But from now on, it's going to be different. I told my brother that you were in love with this man. Yes. Yes, I've always loved John Rudlin, and I knew that he loved me. So now we're going to be married. Gee, that's swell, sweetheart. Oh, I'm so happy, Mother. I'm all for it, Mother. Disgraceful, that's what it is. Aunt Carolyn, I'm sorry for you, because I suppose you can't help being a cold book. But my sorrow isn't great enough to prevent me from throwing you out of this house. Don't you push me, Mary Colebrook. Oh, 
Oh, gee, I wanted to put her out. Aunt Carolyn, there's the door. Stop it! You and now, as Bill would say, Aunt Carolyn, scram! Well, I guess that's that. <sighs> well, now, now I think we can have our dinner. Dinner, sir? Mother, here's something we bought for you. Oh. Oh, flowers. Three boxes of them. Oh, darling, they're, they're, they're lovely. Thank you so much. I've got to start practicing again. Oh, gee whiz. Well, Bill. Well, Bill, what's the matter? I wanted to get you a present, too. Oh, Bill, you've given me the greatest, biggest present of all. What about the house? Dinner, sir. Uh, I was going to get you a real present with the newspapers I sold. Oh, hey, I forgot. Mr. Rudden, what happened to my papers? I sold them. All of them? Every last one. Here you are. Two dollars and twenty cents. Hey, wait a minute. There ought to be another dime there. Oh, look. Dinner, sir. Oh, that must be Lynn. <laughs> By George, you're right. It was way down in the bottom of my pocket. Thanks. Hello. Say, maybe I'll take well, you in as a partner. Well, How about a sweetheart? I think it's a wonderful Mother, idea. Don't you, John? Marvelous. I am, sir. What Mother. is it, Muriel? Yes, Mother, Mother, can I go out to a dance with Lynn tomorrow? Mother, listen. Well, I think... Uh, what, Gwen? A bureau of the door. Mother, can I? Oh, it's fine. I, I mean, of course you can. It, well, Oh, isn't it just grand to be back to normal again? The curtain falls on tonight's play, and Kay Francis and Warren William return to the footlights. We congratulate them on a fine performance. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. And I know you'll join us in awarding a big red apple to Dix Davis, who played Bill tonight. He certainly deserves it. He's a fine trooper. No, he hasn't got a red apple handy. <laughs> so suppose we find him another part instead. <laughs> Kay, it was very pleasant appearing with you again. Just like old times, Warren. It's several years since we did a picture together. You know, Kay, I like to remember Warren as a tall, decisive figure in a toga. A toga? <laughs> I imagine he looks well in one, but why? Well, he played Caesar for me in Cleopatra. And confidentially, I've always admired any man who can look decisive in a toga. <laughs> <laughs> Purely the inspiration I had from the director, C.B. <laughs> Seriously, though, it's grand to be here in this theater again, Mr. DeMille. I've enjoyed it. And I want to tell you that I'm still absolutely loyal to Lux Soap. It's been several years since I discovered what a help it is in keeping one's complexion smooth. And now I wouldn't think of using any soap but Lux. Hmm, great minds run on the same channel, Kay, when it comes to Lux Soap. <laughs> And I know the audience is anxious now to hear about next week's play, Mr. DeMille. Well, it's one to really get excited about, Kay. Because next Monday night, we're going to present Bob Hope and Constance Bennett in The Awful Truth. <laughs> it's a madcap comedy with Bob in a part of a young man who's, who's trying to win back the love of his former wife against pretty tough competition. Frankly... We believe it's an even better play for Bob than the one we had when he was here last year. So if you're looking for a really entertaining hit, don't miss Bob Hope and Constance Bennett and the Awful Truth at this microphone next Monday night. No, I certainly won't, C.B. It sounds like a great show. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Theaters like this are made by stars like you. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Bob Hope and Constance Bennett in The Awful Truth. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> Kay Francis has just finished the picture The Man Who Lost Himself, produced by Larry Fox for Universal Pictures. Warren William will soon be seen in the Columbia picture, The Lone Wolf Takes a Chance. Heard in tonight's play were Dix Davis as Bill, Claire Verdera as Aunt Caroline, Janet Waldo as Muriel, Sidney Miller as Reggie, Barbara Jean Wong as Gwen, Verna Felton as Mrs. Crosby, Edward Arnold Jr. as Lynn, Bernice Pilot as Beulah, Lou Merrill as truck driver, Ferdinand Munier as doctor, and Shirley Ward, Alaire Armstead, James Reed, and Tommy Lane. Our music is directed by Louis Silvers. And your announcer has been Melville Roy. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>